guys coming out today. Absolutely. We're going to take a look at the, at the new Simrad NSS to start off, and we also have our new 3G radar on board. But, um, to, you know, to start off, what, what we've developed here is what we call our uh, a touch-sensible device. And by touch-sensible, what we mean is uh, we've combined the best elements of touchscreen technology and also actual keys and a rotary control knob because, as some of us discussed last night, there are certainly times on the water where a touchscreen doesn't make sense. But the key was to come up with an elegant design that wouldn't feel too uh, button-heavy and would be easy to move back and forth between the various features. So we've uh, developed a new home screen. We call it our Pages screen. It's accessed with this button right here. Uh, we have a new icon-driven menu. As you can see, we've got uh, quick keys for the charts, for the radar, for the echo, nav, video, instruments. And then we have some favorite screens down below, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. But to uh, operate the device, anything you want to do, you simply click on it. If we want to get into charts, you click that once, as you can see it explodes into a, a, a chart submenu. And in the chart submenu, you can have up to nine customizable windows. As a matter of fact, in every submenu, you can have up to nine customizable windows. Um, right here, we have some, some, some already set up. And if you want to just go into full screen charts, obviously you can just click on that. As you can see here, you've got, uh, this is our Insight cartography. This is cartography that comes preloaded with all the units. It's uh, kind of uh, equal to, I'd say, a combination of Navionics, silver, and gold cartography. Um, and we also support Navionics cartography on micro SD right here. Uh, so you can have platinum or any Navionics cartography as well, whatever you'd like to use. Um, to pan and zoom, you simply use your finger. You can pan and zoom anywhere around the screen. You can go check out an area. If you want to get right back to where you are, you hit the X and it'll pop you right back to where you were. For zooming in and out, we decided that that kind of touch and pinch that you do with the iPhone and the iPad didn't really make sense on the water, particularly when you're trying to get down to a certain level. So instead, we use a rotary control knob for that. Uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a pretty meaty processor. I mean, it's a quick redraw. You know, for panning and zooming, you can, you can again, it's going to redraw very quickly. It may take a second to load up all the soundings. but. If you are in a certain menu, you want to, for instance, in charts, if we want to create a new waypoint, you simply click and hold on the screen. It pops up a menu. We can create a new waypoint right here. Certainly, from a naming standpoint, touch screen is a lot easier than uh, trying to use a keypad. As you can see, the keyboard is very responsive here. It's good for people with uh, thick fingers, too. I mean, it's really easy to use. And wet, cold fingers. And wet, cold fingers as well. Um, that's, that's an important point. Yeah, one actually, of the things we have does it uh, work with wet yeah, cold fingers? Yeah, we actually have a little video on our website, uh, and we wet it down a, a number of units. And Mike Wargo, our product manager, came, came in and uh, demonstrated the fact that you could go in there with wet fingers uh, and operate it quite efficiently. Uh, uh, gloves, there's certain gloves that'll allow it, certain gloves won't. So yeah. just a heads up on that. Yeah. Okay, that does get it to be a little bit of a challenge. But that's the beauty of this, guys, is the fact that we, virtually everything that you can do with the touchscreen, we've still allotted you to do with the buttons, the rotary knob, the functionality of the knob. It's an and or situation. So you do have that uh, uh, redundancy built in there. Yeah, it's about, I would say it's probably about 97, 98% redundancy. Again, certain things like not being able to zoom with the touchscreen would be one of those things that where there's not crossover. But for the most part, it allows people to dive back and forth and, and get into any menu or any screen that they want. Uh, a few other interesting little things on the charts. If you want to create a route, it's incredibly easy. I mean, you simply, you know, tap your route. And as you can see here, as I tap along, it's actually going to create that route for us. And you can save those <coughs> routes later or uh, simply, in this case, just discard it. Uh, when you're in a certain uh, uh, screen, like uh, charting, if you hit the menu key, you'll see that it's going to bring up a chart-specific menu. It's not going to take you into a master menu and make you dive down into submenus. And what's really cool about that, it's neat to see there, but if we go back here just a step, and we go back into charts and we were to choose a, uh, a, a screen that has a split, and by the way, on this device, you can do up to uh, four split screens. I should have mentioned when we started, the NSS is available in three different sizes, a 7, an 8, and a 12 inch. This is the NSS 12. The 8 and the 12 can do up to four split screen. On the 7, we limit it to two, just because you start to lose some of the detail. 
But if you'll notice, any active screen on a split screen is surrounded with a red border. And to move from active screen to active screen is as simple as touching it. What's nice about that is when you're in the sonar screen, you hit the menu, you're getting your sonar menu. If you're in the chart menu, you hit the menu key, you're getting your chart menu. Radar, same thing. And by the way, this is uh, our 3G radar is in standby right now. One of the features we pride ourselves on, and it's really very simple, is if you need to turn your radar on, that transmit key is right there. You don't have to dive into the menu. It's very easy to do. Click transmit, and because it's a broadband radar, by the way, you'll see it comes on instantly. There's no warm-up time. It's one of the beauties of our solid-state radar. You can see tremendous detail there, uh, and I'll bring up a full-screen radar in a second. Uh, some of the other uh, intuitive things that we built into this is when you're on, say, your sounder screen and you want to adjust your gain and your color, common adjustments, all you need to do is touch this rotary knob. You can see there your gain pops up instantly. Click it once, get into your color adjustments. Same thing on radar. I touch this knob. Where I, oh, right now it's an auto. Hang on. I touch that knob. Now I've got gain control. Here's C clutter. And again, I can click and hold to... Uh, switch between manual, offshore, and harbor. And now I can adjust my sea clutter. Click it one more time, I've got my rain clutter control. So again, I want to put this back into auto. I just click and hold. And you can see it popping. The same technique works mm -hmm. with the fish finder. Exactly. Right. Same in fact, it goes actually one step further. You can actually use these yourself. You can make these adjustments right here with this and make these gains. You press and hold it goes into an auto mode. Okay. Same so and then both, both again the dual functionality yeah. with the touch screen as well as the knobs. And then I just my experience the the auto um, any anybody's unit frequently just gets too cluttered with stuff. And so you know adjusting it does it save the adjustments you made so the next time you turn it back on you're there again instead of having to readjust every every day. I believe yes. I believe that whatever, whatever you wherever checks, you left off yeah. in manual mode not in auto mode, manual mode. That's a great, it's a great uh, concern because I always push people towards the manual. If your screen gets too cluttered, it depends how you're fishing and what you're doing. Uh, yes, it will retain what you had last dropped off. Okay. okay. Same thing with the radar. If you go in standby mode or turn the radar off, you turn it back on. It's going to stay in that manual setting what you had previously. A few other little uh, uh, interesting points about. Uh, let him get this back down to a usable. <laughs> Another uh, interesting point about so if you were sliding. Sorry, oh no, go ahead. You were sliding your hand just generally downwards to yeah, just kind downwards. of following the the circle so you kind itself. Of a circle, but yeah, it's all right. Another uh, interesting uh, thing here, you can see we have this information bar up at the top. There are six slots of information right there. If you notice on the NSE to the right, he's got twelve. You can have up to twelve pieces of information displayed. But what we've decided to do on this one, and by the way, you can edit that. You can put any information you want. Right now, we're showing six. We can turn on a second row of information. We can customize any of these 12 pieces of information with anything that's on the boat. I mean, time to waypoint, ETA. You can go into your vessel options. You can go into, uh, you know, speed and depth or law, you know, the... the, the Water depth. temperature. Water temperature. If I want depth there, I just click on depth, and now we've got our depth setting right there. The other cool thing is a lot of people will leave it like this, but personally, I think it takes up a lot of screen real estate, particularly when you're using split screen. So we have this other cool feature which allows you to actually rotate the rows, and you can actually change the time. We'll leave it at five seconds here. But as you'll see, you've got six pieces of information showing there. Two, one, it flips over. You've got six more pieces of information. It's a great way to access a lot of pieces yeah. of information without taking up too much screen real estate. Um, another little interesting thing, as I mentioned, uh, in each of these menus you have up to nine uh, customizable screens. Let's customize a screen here on the radar page. It's really simple to do. Maybe you start with radar, and then let's say you want your instruments up there at the same time, and then maybe you want charts. Uh, but maybe you want the instruments down here and the charts up there. And, you know, maybe even want a little video running while you're cruising out there. I don't know. So uh, you YouTube hit that video on how to catch fish, maybe. Exactly. As soon as you hit save, uh, that, it will build that screen for you. And once it builds that screen, when you go back in, you'll notice that that screen now exists there where we created it right up top. If you don't like any of these screens, don't want it anymore, simply click and hold, delete it, and it's gone. Is the, can the video be 